What? Good YouTube, and welcome to the house. I'm back, baby, and does it feel good to say that intro? I had some food that did more than disagree with me. It knocked me on my butt for almost a full week, but today I get to do a video, I get to work out. It feels so awesome. So let's start with that not a financial advisor channel disclaimer. I don't know your bankroll. I don't know where the nation's currency or other nation's currencies are gonna end up in the next weeks or months, but I will say that it seems like a pretty darn good time to get some OCG stuff you might have been waiting for. Now, could this dip go even further? Maybe, but things typically tend to even out a little when it's this harsh, but as I understand it, Japan has some distribution issues as well as oil prices going crazy for them that's causing this. Maybe that's all on the surface of articles I'm reading. That seems to be it, but do your own research as well. But this is the biggest dip in like 15 years, almost 20 years. It is crazy to see the yen that low versus the US dollar. And I know versus euros and pounds, it's a similar thing because the euro and pound is up versus the US dollar on the year also. Now, this is why I stopped vending a long time ago while doing Market Watch. It is a conflict of interest. And I'm not going to teach you my fishing grounds for OCG stuff. I use that for the Patreon as well as my personal collection. But I will teach you how to fish, I would learn that forwarding services and these forwarding services will take you to some of those entry level sites and then you can do your research for there. Also, I would like to say learning forwarding services is pretty good for getting stuff maybe from overseas like card market to the USA. I know all my EU watchers are like cringing right now, like please stay away from card market. But there is another use for forwarding services for getting cheap cards if you don't mind. A long time to get them up into your inventory and also, you know, paying extra shipping cost. It's going to happen. But versus buying on like US eBay and stuff, this is typically cheaper. And and you can start to learn from there. That being said, let's go ahead and get to the cards. John, now this could be some low-hanging fruit content of Ghost from the Past 2 pre-sales. Don't buy. It says pre-sale on TCG Player for the 200th time. But all I will say with this is Tier 0 pre-sales will be up tomorrow from what I hear from a certain rep of theirs. So I'm hoping we can bring you some way more realistic prices versus the four unmotivated sellers here trying to get your money on TCG Player. Now, the high-hanging fruit is Ding Wong in a reprint for Yang Zing's The Counter Trap. It got reprinted. Ding Wong could be back. And it does seem like the OCG is trying to merge the list a little more with the last one. But ban list is still speculative. Whenever you're betting on these cards, somebody else is obviously selling them and somebody's going to win or lose there. But I do feel like when it comes to Ding Long, that is such a hype powerhouse of a card that also could fall a little flat depending on the format, but will always be a threat. I, I remember this is actually how Hunter Lloyd started in competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! Making these crazy Ding Long decks. What a time back in the Zodiac tournaments. But yeah, the boomer memories aside, Ding Long... Very interesting card that people are going for right now. And then it's a ton of easy call price falls. Here's some more low-hanging fruit content. You have Mardell going down very fast and almost back to the price it was at with people going, yeah, please, just take it. I, I realize Dungoof. And right after their buyout, some other cards are going to be funny. But Galaxy Soldier also coming down from $18 to $12 almost immediately. I would expect that to fall even more in a little bit. But this is one of those ones where you have that lower layered value in something like Ghost from the Past that can solidly go back up over time depending on how many printings or how few printings after happen for a good amount of time. Math Mech Edition, whoop, whoop, up and down right after the buyout and then the announcement for a reprint. Then you have right after the buyout and the announcement of the reprint and another similar gra graph for Sigma along with that lapellation. Now, Blackbeard is one of the only plunders missing from the list on Ghost from the Past 2, and it is spiking really hard as people realize, well, in order to play the deck, you probably want to have access to this. And then you have a lot of tubers doing pretty well with this, like... Coder, I see your video out there doing pretty decent with Plunder Patrol. And you can play it with the Adventure Engine, obviously. That's the legs it's standing on a bit, but still a very interesting deck. Wind or land? Plunder wind? When, when's that going to happen? Maybe they have future support. 
in the wings at some point by Konami too. Rika's had no reprints anywhere in sight, and they also got new support in the OCG. We already saw some cards spiking, and they are spiking a little harder, despite quantities coming back for them. Now, on the list of, I didn't expect that to go crazy just for missing a reprint in a, you know, spring reprint set, Kit is spiking very, very hard now towards $10. You're allowed to complain now. When it was $4 and people were griping and moaning, uh, yeah, I couldn't really understand that. But now that it's near $10, $10 and you had all the time in the world to get it, it's still kind of your fault if you didn't get this card, unless you're coming in from Master Duel, you thought Tri Brigade is kind of neat, now you're deciding to get a deck, then you're allowed to complain. But if you were one of the people complaining at $4, Keep griping, it is now near 10. Also, Ancient Warrior's Oath, getting a tiny spike right now, and a lot of people speculating on this. It is an ultra, or no, super, my bad, super out of Rise of the Duelist, and it does not have a reprint, so definitely something to consider having, maybe using that TCG player link in the description down below, costing you nothing extra to support the channel directly for the cards you'd already be buying. Swap Frog has been consistently going down, it looks like, but suddenly, with new archetypes, everything seems amazing, oh my gosh, level 2, rank 2, people have gone way ham on this card and gone all in on it and it's getting pretty ridiculous sales at 200 which i believe are near some of its all times highs and now the lowest listings are 269 not so nice 270 at this point branded opening continues to go up and spike even further around 14 dollars at this point guardian chimera which market to watch is kind of had these cards on it way too much lately, it feels like, but they continue to go up. Now near $60 average listing. And then Edgem Chain, the unexpected one along here, although a lot of people were playing this engine leading up to this. It is now a $7 lowest common. I can't really believe what I'm seeing. $7 for an Edgem Chain. Now, Fluffle Fright for cards often get expensive to a dollar to two, so the quantities were already down, maybe. And then you have a lot of people interested slash slowly getting these as is the super rare at 13 lowest what's the actual listings 14 ish yeah and the sales are around there 14 to 15 this is being played with the albaz stuff slash the branded and people are playing it as an engine along with fright for patchwork which is probably why this got bought out more realistically besides just the fluffle fright for oh they can do a little something they're over here they're over there they're top cut this regional well there's also interest in it being an engine with the albaz strike stuff i wanted to point out this dark magician that keeps on falling and falling and falling it might be a pretty good time to end up getting this card because when you look at the actual sales People are spending 150 here and there, 145 depending on the seller. And Battle of Chaos the Sealed keeps going up, but only Guardian Chimera inside, along with some of the Ultras, are going up, although Liebermancers could be pretty good here in a bit. And Battle of Chaos has that collectory vibe. There's not much more collectible in this set than the Dark Magician himself. Yes, there's the Starlight Charmer, no waifu tax, that goes along with the other Charmers, and it's one of the best attributes ever. It's been spiking at this point, but when looking around here, Dark Magician himself, and a special art, unlikely to get reprinted anywhere, especially an upgrade, well... This is something that I think could age well over time. You have that initial disappointment of, a, oh, I overspent, it's not one out of every six cases, which is why you wait for confirmed ratios and pack pulls from reliable sources and multiple sources, which is what I do on the channel. But looking at Dark Magician himself... I think that this is starting to get a bit low for what it is, and I could see over time it increasing, especially if this box does well, which early on is what the box is exactly doing, versus the value inside not really being there at all. And again, one of those sets that's not going to be in this year's Megatons will have time to improve elsewhere, and when the other value leeches out from eventual Mega Pack reprints, you know who's standing here, but that's a very long time, which is why we also talk about opportunity cost. Your money going into this versus, say, something else like Ghost from the Past 2, code the What's Good 5 for 5% off and to support the channel directly if it's still up on Gamer's Choice, where the pre-sales are just going to blow out the eventual secondary market price on sealed and keeping it sealed. Well, which will increase faster, and then could you turn something else and still get a deal on that? That's the real question, isn't it? And that's the exciting part about the 
market, we don't have all those answers. And if somebody's telling you they are sure it's going to go this way, they're sure it's going to go that way, it's still just speculation and educated guessing. Finally, Foolish Burial Ultra Rare, when you have two secrets hanging above it and a Lost Art and a Super Rare from Turbo Pack, it is spiking up now. You have Time Wizard formats, you have people wanting to hollow out their decks, and they're settling on this Ultra Rare, which, to be fair, does look kind of nice, but it is going up quite a bit over time versus other copies of Foolish. And the secrets, you know, if you'd got just a bit ago, you would be paying less than that on a speed duel secret out of the battle city box that's why i did say pay attention to those battle city box secret rares as it's you know new version comes out the gx box people will put their eyes back on the old product and it's been out there a year you can find these cyclical trends in the Yu-Gi-Oh markets but they don't always hold true sometimes you're going to break tradition, something else is going to happen, and that's why we market the watch. Thanks for watching today's video. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed the conversation. I tried to keep that upbeat, you know, kind of pace of keeping things quick despite having a ton of freaking tabs up here. And I really do enjoy talking about this. It's one of the most fun things I have. I've been waiting so long to do a video, and it feels good. Tomorrow, we should see some pre-sales on Ghosts from the Past from a more reliable source than, say, TCG Player pre-sales. Thanks for watching.